Before humans had tanks and fighter jets and machine guns, they still had a million ways to maim and slaughter each other. War is at the root of most human history, and the weapons that we have been using for thousands of years have been extremely inventive and oftentimes kinda bananas. From a cannon so big that it nearly sent its own soldiers mad, to a type of fancy fan that doubled as a secret stabbing tool, here are the 20 most feared weapons in ancient history. Number 20. The Basilic Cannon This is a cannon that was designed with one very specific purpose. It was to smash down the walls of Constantinople. But did it succeed? Well, let's poke around in the history a bit, shall we? Built all the way back in 1453, this massive Turkish cannon was 27 feet long, and it was so chunky that it had to be transported by several groups of oxen whenever it needed to be moved. That's because the thing was cast from bronze and weighed over 40,000 pounds. This made the Basilic Cannon the largest weapon of its time, and it was also the loudest. In fact, the cannon can be heard as far away as 10 miles when fired. It spewed out fire and smoke, and was able to hurl a 1,200-pound cannonball as far as a mile. It does sound kind of impressive, and it is definitely a pretty intimidating weapon to have in the arsenal, but did it knock down those walls? Well, it tried, but it didn't quite succeed. The trouble was that it took literally hours to load this monster gun, and even then longer to prepare it to fire, and that was on a good day. The cannon could be fired only about seven times. Although the gun was feared by the enemies, it was also a hugely terrifying prospect for the gunners, who were given the task of its operation. The basilic was so loud that it gave them the shakes, and it was so dangerous that they risked their own lives whenever they were in proximity to it and could be flattened by its weight at any moment. When they eventually loaded the monster and lit the fuse, all they could do was run away as far as possible, find shelter, and pray that they survived the blast. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Scythed Chariot There were no doubt some fairly alarming weapons available to the armed forces of ancient times, and there seemed to be an especially creative bloodthirsty angle to most of the weaponry that would be modified for the battlefields of ancient Greece and Rome. Like this terrifying piece of equipment, for example. This is a scythed chariot, and it is exactly what the name would imply. Yes, those are literal scythes attached to the axles. It does take a whole lot of imagination to conjure up what the extremely sharp and bloody blades were for. So, if you imagine this powerful wheeled war chariot with horses dressed in armor, and soldiers with deadly weapons riding inside thundering towards your army, well, they did have added blades sticking out of the sides of this particular chariot as they charged into your troops, slicing and dicing as they go. As well as all those pokeouts from the sides, there are additional scythes that are attached to the underneath of the driver's seat, just to be sure that anyone who's getting run over is also getting chopped up. Well, lovely. Number 18. Archimedes Heat Ray Back in ancient Greece, Archimedes invented a thing that is known as Archimedes Heat Ray. This device was said to have burned the Roman ships that came to attack during the Siege of Syracuse in 214 to 212 BC. This device was believed to have been constructed from a bunch of strategically positioned mirrors that would reflect the rays of the sun and act as a parabolic reflector and could be directed at the ships and would set them on fire. There's been a whole lot of debate about the credibility of this invention because it doesn't appear in the serving works of Archimedes. However, it would be tested in 1973 by a bunch of science nerds, and they used 70 mirrors that had been coated with copper, pointing them at a plywood mock-up of a Roman vessel, and surely enough, the sunlight caused the boat to catch on fire. Number 17. The Claw of Archimedes Next up, we have another crazy invention by good old Archimedes, where this weapon, or protection system, depending on how you look at it, was apparently used as a defense mechanism against attacks at the seaward part of the city wall of Syracuse in ancient Greece. There are several varied accounts of the way that the contraption worked, but most of the ancient historians' accounts seem to agree that it was basically like a kind of crane that 
had a massive heavy kind of grappling hook that could be dropped onto an attacking ship and then push it down into the water. It would then apparently cause the ship to capsize or even try to sink it. These types of defenses were used during the period of the Second Punic War, which took place during 214 BC when Syracuse was attacked by the Roman Republic. These iron claws, or hands as they were commonly known, were deployed to great success, seemingly sinking many attacking ships and causing huge confusion amongst the remaining ones. This system, along with a series of catapults, caused heavy losses for the Roman troops during that particular conflict. Number 16. Chinese Repeating Crossbow Catches the string, pull back. This next dangerous weapon was invented all the way back during the Warring States period in ancient China. That was a very long time ago. This particular weapon managed to combine into one motion the bow spanning, the bolt placing, and the shooting actions. The thing was not so feared as some of the other weapons of the ancient Chinese world, but it was still a particularly scary piece of death-making equipment. So the general idea behind it was that the repeating crossbow could be used by anyone and was often employed by women. It was considered a non-military weapon back then and would often be used for household defense against robbery, and they were also sometimes employed in hunting. What made them so scary, however, was the way with which they were recommended to be used. The firing of the weapon was relatively weak, so it was suggested that the tips of the darts should be dipped in poison, preferably what was known as tiger-killing poison, and then even a weak shot at a person or a horse or whatever would be deadly so long as it drew blood. Terrifying. Number 15. Greek Fire Well, this thing looks a lot like an ancient kind of flamethrower, so that's jolly interesting if you like that sort of thing. The Byzantine Empire had a few tricks up their sleeves to protect themselves as they were perpetually under attack from all sides. The use of so-called Greek fire was so effective that its formula was a closely guarded secret that was handed down from emperor to emperor until the empire eventually fell in 1453. Unfortunately, all of this hush-hush secret business meant that today we modern types have absolutely no idea how the Byzantines made this devastating weapon at all. Greek fire was the most dangerous and effective weapon they had at their disposal and is no small aspect of how the Byzantine Empire was able to last for the 700 years that it did. Incendiary weapons were obviously in use by this point in history. You know, slamming arrows and fire pots being some of the top faves of this very war-greedy era. So the long and the short of it was that this Greek fire, that is the true Greek fire that the Byzantines had, not the feeble inferior version that the Crusaders called Greek fire, was essentially like modern day napalm. And we all know what a great laugh that stuff is. The general accounts of the use of this stuff suggest that it would spontaneously catch fire and could not be extinguished with water. In fact, it would burn ever more vigorously when it came in contact with water and would firmly adhere itself to anything that it came close to. The use of Greek fire seems to have been especially effective at sea, where it was employed to attack naval vessels by being launched in clay pots or in the form of a kind of rudimentary flamethrower. The way to defend against it seemed to be by soaking heavy cloth or leather in vinegar in order to repel the flames. It was stinky, but probably better than being burned alive. Number 14. War Elephant Exactly as it sounds, a war elephant was an actual living elephant that was trained for combat. War elephants were especially prominent in some battles of ancient times, often being used in ancient India, and to a lesser extent there's evidence of their use in ancient China. The elephant trainer would be employed to tame the wild elephant and teach it to be ridden by soldiers while assisting the rider. They were trained to run, maneuver, and move in formation and command, and they were ultimately trained to charge at and often trample their enemies. An elephant can be a fairly dangerous animal even at the best of times. So just imagine what it can do if it's trained to wreak havoc. One wrong move and an angry elephant could squash you like a bug. And to be honest, there's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do to defend yourself against their sheer size and power. 
Although elephants are generally peace-loving creatures, the males can become super aggressive during their mating season. This is when they're trying to flex their muscles to show off their macho moves and win a mate. If two males happen to cross paths during that time, then there's going to be some trouble, and they're so pumped up in all of their hormones that they just can't help it. Number 13. Tree Ramay this is a type of ancient warship that was invented and used by the various ancient Mediterranean maritime civilizations, in particular the Phoenicians, as well as the Greeks and the Romans. The name comes from the three rows of oars that were manned by one man each, and there is a bunch of evidence that would suggest that these types of vessels were high-tech for their time. They're believed to have been designed for speed, so weight was a very important element to the ship's design consideration. They needed to be fast as possible to maximize their impact in the arena of war, and the methods that would be used most in maritime combat at this time were boarding and ramming. The main aim was to immobilize the enemy and sink their ships while taking the crews with them, and the ships were designed to efficiently ram their enemies, create some damage that would cause them to take on water. The men below deck would immediately be at risk of drowning, and the battle would move to the stricken vessel's crew's fight for survival rather than against the victorious ship itself. Number 12. A Chariot the image of the chariot is one of the most iconic of the ancient world. They were essentially a sort of cart that was pulled by horses, but rather than the slower horse and cart style that we may think of in the rural aspect, the chariot was designed to be really super fast and be used on the battlefield. These things have long been associated with the ancient Romans, but unlike many of the useful techniques that they did invent, they can't take the credit for the chariot in general. There are examples of these that have been found that date back from as far as 1950 to 1880 BCE. These chariots were actually buried in the tombs of the people in the Sintashta culture which were found in modern-day Russia. After their uses on the battlefield were eventually made obsolete by light cavalry, the chariot continued to be used in races and games as well as for transportation. Number 11. Catapult Back in the olden days, the catapult was the weapon of choice for launching all manner of dangerous projectiles over a long distance without the need to use explosives. Catapults use tension to build up the energy before being released, and it then launches the chosen missile or object. As far as archaeology knows, the earliest catapults date back to the 7th century BCE, where they were used on the walls of Jerusalem for shooting massive stone. It was the Greeks and the Romans that went to town with catapult design, Essentially, they got super creative with the variations that were possible and invented stuff like arrow shooting machines based on the catapult, and these machines were capable of firing both arrows and stones, and the projectiles could also be set on fire. And that made them all the more terrifying, but all the more festive, I would suppose. Number 10. Gladius Next up, we have a type of sword that was the main weapon of ancient Roman foot soldiers between the 3rd century BC until the end of the 3rd century AD. The gladius was one of the essential pieces of equipment for a Roman legionary. As well as this sword, they also carried a shield called a scutum and a javelin or two called pila, and they also had a dagger called a pugio. Later on, they were equipped with darts. The javelins were used to throw at an enemy from a distance and hopefully disable their opponent's shields, and then the soldiers would rush in and use their swords to engage in close combat. And if the word gladius sounds familiar, it's likely because it's become the root word for some that we still use today. The word gladiator even comes from the meaning of swordsman, and there's also use in botanical language where a gladiolus, which means little sword, is a flowering plant with leaves that are said to resemble the shape of the sword. It's thrilling stuff, but basically, a gladius is just the Latin word for sword. Number 9. Steam Cannon This is a steam cannon, which as you would expect, used the power of steam to launch a projectile from a cannon. It's pretty simple stuff, really. Again, the first design of one of these crazy weapons can be attributed to Archimedes. It was also an invention of necessity that he had mustered up during the siege of Syracuse. The weapon was made from a metal tube that would then be placed in a furnace, and the end of the tube was covered with a projectile being loaded into the other end. The tube would then gradually heat up, and at that point, a little bit of water would be added behind the projectile. 
This was then supposed to expand pretty rapidly into vapor because of the heat, and that would blast the object out of the tube and towards whatever it was pointed at. It seems that the ancient Greeks had some luck with this, but it was probably pretty limited because when efforts were made to create a kind of steam-powered machine gun during the age of steam in the 19th century, they would mostly flop. Although a Russian steam cannon was successfully developed between 1826 and 1829, it was allegedly capable of firing 50 cannonballs every minute by using the power of steam. Number 8. Falcata Next up, we have a sword from the pre-Roman Iberian Peninsula. Although this is now known as a falcata, the name that was originally given to it by the people who used it is actually unknown. The swords were used widely in Liberia from the 5th to the 1st centuries BC, and they resemble many of the weapons of ancient Greece, the kinds that were used for slashing and slicing anyways, known as copies. This is thin, but I'm going to actually do some cutting with this. What makes the Iberian version different is the fact that it has a double-edged blade to about halfway its full length, and that makes the sword extremely sharp and jabby. The Greek types only have the standard single sharp edge. The slightly curving shape of these swords lends themselves to some decorative features that seem to have been favored by the Iberians, and they often had grips that had characteristic hook shapes, the end of which would often be styled into a horse or a bird of some description. Number 7. Japanese War Fan A fan, yes, a hand fan, like a fancy lady would use, that is also a weapon of war. It's crazy, but it's true. Back in feudal Japan, the samurai class used these war fans, and they were also used by the female ninja. They were made dangerous and kind of cool, and they were a surprise weapon. Although they could be used as a weapon, the fans were primarily utilized as a signaling tool. There were a couple different types. There were real fans that were fashioned from metal or wooden ribs and attached with a lacquered paper, and then there were the solid and permanently open sorts that were made out of metal or wood. A war commander could use the fan to indicate to his troops different signals would issue different commands. The three types of Japanese war fan were the Gunsen, the Tessen, and the Gunbai. The first was a regular kind of folding fan used by normal Japanese warriors in order to keep themselves cool. So far, so ladylike. These were generally made from wood or bronze or brass. They were lightweight but strong, serving an extra purpose depending upon where they were hung on the body. They were typically kept on the belt or the breastplate, and a well-placed fan could even help to protect a warrior by deflecting an arrow. The second sort were called Tessin. These were folding fans with a secret, because they were made from heavy iron plates but were designed to appear as though they were a regular fan. This meant that the samurai were able to sneak them into places where they could not take a sword. They could be used as a weapon, but samurai were also trained to use them for fending off arrows and darts and as a handy flipper to help them swim faster. The final sort of fan, the Goombai, were much larger in open solid shapes. They were generally iron or solid wood and were carried by higher ups in the army. They offered protection from arrows as signals and a protection from the heat of the sun. They're all very handy indeed. Number 6. Epsilon Axe Next up, we have a type of battle axe which looks a lot like the Greek letter Epsilon, hence its name. Initially, these sorts of axes were used in the Middle East, and over time they became spread throughout the eastern parts of Europe and Russia and into Nordic nations. There are even hieroglyphs that appear that show the ancient Egyptian warriors carrying axes like these. This is an AR-500 steel. The expert historical circles, in general consensus, have said that these weapons are a kind of tool that would have belonged to lower-ranking infantry, calling the Epsilon Axe the poor man's kopesh, and suggesting the more valuable infantry soldiers would have been equipped with only a sword, whereas the less important had this sort of axe. Even so, you can just imagine this thing swinging around on the battlefield and see that sort of damage that might be inflicted. That's the thing with these ancient weapons. They all seem to be designed to be simple, yet especially brutal. Chopping, it would appear, was a favorable action in any ancient weapon. Just imagine all the severed limbs that would have been left all over the show. Mmm, meaty. Number 5. The Mons Meg It has a weird name, but this is apparently a big gun that was built to secure the demands of Philip the Good, the Duke of Burgundy in 1449, 
and then it was sent as a gift to James II, the King of Scots. Because, of course, who hasn't received a massive cannon as a gift? <laughs> this was medieval Europe, and everyone loved a big good old cannon, you know? Anyways, back then this wasn't only a big one, it was actually the biggest, measuring 20 inches across the diameter of the barrel, and that made it one of the biggest caliber cannons in the world at the time. This big fat monster gun would be used to great effect in sieges until the mid-16th century, but after that it was only wheeled out to do more ceremonial junk. Somewhat unceremoniously though, it had an accident in 1680 when the barrel burst and the old Mons Meg could no longer shoot its load. So after hanging about at Edinburgh Castle, gathering dust and stubbing toes, it would be taken in 1754 to the Tower of London and dumped there with all the other old and broken weapons. It was returned to Edinburgh Castle in 1829 and has since been restored. Number 4. The Scythian Bow The Scythians were a group of ancient nomadic people who lived in the region of the Eurasian steppes between the 9th and 1st centuries BC. The first were thought to have originated in the area of southern Siberia, and they eventually moved outwards until their territories reached the Carpathian Mountains to the west and as far as uh, China in the east. These people were amongst the first to use horses in warfare, and they've developed bows that were especially constructed to be used from a mounted position. The bow was slow, but was especially powerful. It had a very distinct shape that is still recognizable today as the Scythian bow. This particular style of bow was not only distinct, but was also extremely deadly. What made it so effective was that these bows were composites, made of wood, horn, sinew, and glue. They were technically sound and most advanced of the time, and the horse archers themselves were extremely skilled. The equipment they used was all designed to facilitate the best possible use of the bow and the arrows while riding. The whole shooting system, from the construction of the bow to the positioning of the quiver and the bow case combo, known as grottos, were all optimized for the benefit of the archer. These arrows had small and barbed heads that were effective for fatal shots, only in a few very precise areas of the body, so the Scythians would dress their arrows in a poison made from putrefied vipers, human blood, and animal feces. This horrific combination would ensure that these arrows would do more damage than they could just by wounding alone. How ruthless. Number 3. A Sling Also known as a shepherd sling, or sometimes a slingshot, the sling was a rudimentary weapon of ancient times that was used to throw a projectile like a rock or even a lead sling bullet. These things have been used since time immemorial for the purposes of hunting game and warfare. The simplicity of the sling has meant that these weapons can be built of the most basic materials, The premise of the sling is that it has a small pouch in the middle of two cords. The projectile is then placed in the central pouch, and the sling is pulled back and swung in an arc before being released at just the right moment in order to release the content in the direction of the target. Accuracy is dependent on the user's skill level, but the sling itself is more or less available to anyone who can fashion it out of the available materials. Number 2. The Kopesh Sword the Kopesh is an ancient Egyptian sword that is shaped like a sickle. It does look scary, and that's because it is. The standard sword of Kopesh would likely be somewhere between 20 to 24 inches in length, and the shape offered the user several different and dangerous options for its use. The curve inside the Kopesh could be used to trap an opponent's arm or to liberate them of their shield, for example. They also had the fearsomely sharp outside edge, that would be extremely effective in all of the ancient world-style slicing and dicing. And these things were also super old. The earliest known depiction of the Kopesh in the ancient world dates these swords all the way back to 2500 BC. It is believed that this style of sword was a development of earlier battle axes that featured a distinctive curved shape that was so good at all that chopping and swinging of the blood-soaked battlefields of the ancients. It is lovely. It's always nice to think about how much time and energy is put into imagining better and more sufficient technologies to maim and slaughter all throughout human history now, isn't it? Ha ha ha! Such fun! Number 1. The Roman Pilum And finally, we have the Pilum, or Pilum, 
Regardless of how the word is pronounced, it was a sort of javelin thing that we looked at briefly before when discussing the equipment of the average Roman infantry soldier. The Roman pilum was used across the armies of the Roman Empire. They were usually about 6 feet and 7 inches in length and made out of wood with an iron shank and a long pyramid-shaped head. That was the dangerous pointy part at the end. I mean, if I was holding that, it would have reached the man behind. The shank was often made from softer iron, so that when the sharp end did make impact, it would then cause the softer part to buckle and bend, making the pilum of no potential use to an enemy on the battlefield. They generally weighed somewhere between 2 and 5 pounds, and earlier examples tend to be heavier than those of the later years of the empire. These weapons were used to cause a great amount of damage, as much as possible really, to pierce through armor and to keep on going through the body of the victim. They were also used extensively to disarm the enemy before attacking with a sword and shield. Well, that's all from today's trip to the limb-strewn battlefields of the ancient past. Which of these weapons seems to be the most scary to you, and which of them would you take into battle? Go ahead and let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.